Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006. I'm going to talk now about how we can use the log concentration plots to predict the pH of a solution just by looking at the graph and where certain lines intersect. So that's a use for these log concentration plots. Right, in order to predict the pH of the solution, you first have to be able to draw the concentration plot. So, so we'll explain how to do that. And we need something else. We need the proton balance condition. The proton balance condition is an equation which expresses the H plus ion concentration in terms of other species which produce the H plus or which consume the H plus. Let me say that again. The proton balance condition is an equation which expresses H plus concentration in terms of other species which produce it. Those are called proton sources or consume it which are called proton sinks. Let's look at water. Simplest case, water dissociates to form H plus and OH minus. So water is a source of H plus. It doesn't appear in the proton balance condition. What we can say is that whenever we see an OH in solution, we will have to see a H plus partner because they both came from the same source. So that means the concentration of the OH has to equal the concentration of its partner, H+, plus, right? So that's the H plus concentration equal to OH minus concentration. This is the proton balance condition. It expresses the proton concentration in terms of, in this case, uh, a species which was produced from a particular source, water. Or you can think of the OH as being a consumer of H+. It's the partner of the H+. How do we use that condition? This is the proton condition. How do we use that to predict the pH of water? Well, we just have to find out where this condition is satisfied. Whenever the proton condition is satisfied, that is the pH for the particular solution that we're interested in. So in the case of water, we look at where H+, equals OH-, and there it is intersects there at concentration 10 to the minus 7, which is exactly what we know. Well, that's not that exciting. Let's look at a more exciting example, the closed carbonate system. That's H2CO3 dissolved in water, not exposed to the atmosphere. Um, we'll consider the open carbonate system, uh, H2CO3 exposed to the atmosphere later. Okay, so the first thing we have to do uh, is we have to write down, oh, sorry, we have to draw the log concentration plot for this system. So that's easily done. We just have to know the pKa1 and pKa2 of the system, and we have to know the total concentration. So this graph over here shows the total concentration at 10 to the minus 5 molar and also at 10 to the minus 3 molar. And here we have the H to CO3 line. It's actually called CO2 concentration. It's essentially it's very similar to the dissolved HCO2 concentration. In red and here in pink we have the HCO3 concentration line intersecting 0.3 lines, units below the pKa1, 0.3 units below the pKa2. And then in blue we have the CO, the carbonate concentration line over here. So you can see that the, you could have drawn these very easily. Okay, so we've got the graph. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to consider all the sources and sinks of H plus in the system. In this case, if we're talking about a H2CO3 system, it's acidic because we've got H2CO3. So we have mainly H2CO3 in water. So we have only sources of H plus. So the H2CO3 dissociates to form H plus and HCO3. That's one particular reaction producing H plus. There's another reaction, this is incorrect. This should be H2CO3, same as above. So please scrub that. H2CO3 in equilibrium with two H plus and CO3 two minus. That's uh, whenever we see a CO3 two minus, it must have been accompanied by two H pluses. Whenever we see a bicarbonate, it must have been accompanied by H plus because the dominant species in solution is H2CO3. And finally, we also have water that's also dominant. Uh, whenever we see an OH minus, we will have a H plus. So what is the proton condition? We can just write it down. Um, the H plus concentration is equal to the concentration of the OH 
plus the concentration of the bicarbonate because it must have had a partner H plus, plus two times the concentration of CO3 two minus. Two. Why? Because every time we see a carbonate, a carbonate anion, it must be accompanied by two H plus atoms, aqueous. And so that the sum of all of those things must equal the total H plus concentration. That, my friends, is the proton balance condition. How do we use it to find out the pH of the H2CO3 system? Just by reading off this graph. That's the point of all of this. We want to get the pH of this system from the graph. Well, we look and see where this equation is satisfied. So we take the H plus concentration line, we follow it down, and we see which of these curves it first hits. Coming down here, we ignore that because that's at a different concentration. We're talking about 10 to the minus 5 here. Coming down, coming down, cut. So it hits the H to CO3 line. Well, that doesn't appear on the right. The next thing it hits is this pink line. That's the bicarbonate line. That's the first one it hits. That is the pH of the solution. The pH of the solution will be slightly acidic. It's about 5.75 or 8, something like that. You can read it off more accurately. Normally you don't need to know the pH more accurately than 0.1 or 0.2 units. That's good enough. And so you can see this graph, is, graph method is pretty darn useful. You can do it on a napkin or something if you happen to be in the middle of the desert. You don't need your mobile phone or anything like that. So it's kind of nice. Now why does it work? Well, uh, at that point, this point here, the concentration of HCO3 is about 10 to the minus 5.8. The concentration of the carbon uh, of the OH is this grey line over here. That is down here. That's 10 to the minus 8.5. That's quite a bit smaller than uh, bicarbonate. So the concentration of the OH is a very tiny amount compared to HCO3. And then even more tiny, it's even off the graph, it would be 10 to the minus 11 or something like that, would be the concentration of the carbonate ion, many orders of magnitude smaller than the OH, which is orders of magnitude smaller than this. So we can basically what I'm saying is when we look at the solution for this equation, we can scrub OH and we can scrub carbonate because they're negligible. We just look at the intersection of this line and this, this uh, quantity and we get the pH of the solution. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so we can keep going with that. Uh, let's look at a solution which is not H2CO3, but mainly bicarbonate. For example, it's sodium bicarbonate. So the main thing in the solution, of course, is water and bicarbonate. So let's write down the equations for that. The bicarbonate can react to form backwards to form H2CO3 because it's mainly bicarbonate. The bicarbonate can react to form H plus and CO3 two minus. So in this case, unlike the previous case, whenever we see a CO3 two minus, it is accompanied by one H plus. Whenever we see a H2CO3, we know that the H2CO3 has actually used up, it's used up one H plus. So it has become a sink molecule for one of these H pluses. It's on the left. This, this is a production molecule here associated with the production of H plus. And of course we have OH minus associated with production. So how do we write the proton balance condition? The proton balance condition is H plus equals the OH minus concentration because of its partner plus the carbonate concentration, no factor of two here because one of these carbonates is produced, is associated with just one H plus, minus, minus the concentration of H2CO3 because whenever we see one of those, it has used up one H plus. So that would be minus H2CO3. Um, I just switched that onto the left-hand side so this would fit a little bit better. So here we have H plus equals OH minus plus CO3 two minus minus H plus and then we flip that over to the left here. Okay, now what is the pH um, of this system at equilibrium? Well, we just have to look where this equation is satisfied. Um, now, uh, the major species in solution are H2CO3, uh, sorry, 
mainly bicarbonate, so this pink line, and we have to look and see where the pink line, uh, sorry, the uh, HCO3, so that doesn't appear in this proton condition. So we look and see, we follow the H plus line here, uh, we're coming down here. Um, here is the H2CO3 line, so at that point H2CO3 becomes a bigger concentration. This is H2CO3 red here, it becomes bigger than H plus, although they're, they're exactly equal at, at that point there. So the left hand side is these two things. And uh, it has to equal the right hand side, which is the OH concentration plus the carbonate concentration, so that's this blue line. So the, OH, the carbonate concentration is always below the OH concentration by a couple of orders of magnitude. So we can just neglect that carbonate concentration. We just need to look and see where the OH concentration line intersects the left-hand side, which is either, which is basically the sum of the H plus or the CH, CO3. So it's either the H plus over here or it's the CO3. So in this case, it's, we can scrub this one, the H plus, and it's the H2CO3 line. We look and see where that, the red line, intersects the carbonate line. The red line is the H2CO3 intersecting the carbonate line, which is blue, red, blue. So that gives us a pH of about 7.3. That's the answer. Am I right? Yes. Wait, the red line has to intersect uh, the carbonate line. Yes, this point here. There it is. It's a bit confusing with this other graph over here. 